There are only two frogs native to Britain. The common frog is the familiar species, the frog we find in gardens, producing large clumps of jelly-like spawn in early spring. But our second frog, the northern pool frog, is a rarity and the subject of one of the most intriguing wildlife conservation stories. Pool frogs have a distinct pale stripe running down the back, so even at a glance they can be distinguished from our common frog. During the breeding season, male northern pool frogs develop a pale green coloration, but at other times of the year they're olive green or brown. Female northern pool frogs have a much darker, almost black background colour. Young frogs look like smaller versions of the female. As well as looking different to the common frog, pool frogs have very different habits. They love warmth. Northern pool frogs do not breed until the temperature rises in late May or early June. Males call loudly at this time, inflating their pair of vocal sacs, one either side of their head, and jostling for the best spawning locations. Their spawn is produced in clumps, much smaller than that of the common frog. Each female produces five or six, and each are about the size of a walnut. Pool frogs bask in sunlight at the edge of the ponds, or at the water's surface, and this warm environment with plenty of insect prey allows pool frogs to grow rapidly over their relatively brief season of activity, from April to August. Until relatively recently, naturalists did not even recognise the pool frog as belonging here. It was believed to be an introduced, non-native species, and so no one really paid it much attention. But in the 1990s, scientists began to question this, and conducted research into the frogs in the literature, their bones and subfossils, in mating calls and genetics. And the results were unanimous. A northern form of the pool frog was in fact native to Britain, and therefore of great conservation value. But unfortunately, this recognition came too late, just after the last population of English pool frogs at Thompson Common in Norfolk became extinct. The only other known northern pool frogs were limited to a handful of populations in Scandinavia, so plans were made to restore the species back to England, using frogs imported from Sweden. Reintroducing a lost species back into the wild is an appealing and popular idea, but in practice it can be a complicated process. In terms of preserving biodiversity, replacing a species lost from England while also expanding its global range is very desirable. The northern pool frog is internationally rare, so moving frogs required special permission from both Sweden and England. The ecology of the northern pool frog and the reasons for its disappearance had to be understood in order to ensure that the imported frogs didn't repeat the extinction process. Both tadpoles and mature frogs need open sunny habitat, hence the new home had to include ponds that are warm and sunlit, but which do not dry out over the summer. In a partnership led by Amphibian and Reptile Conservation and Natural England, between 2005 and 2008 frogs were flown from Sweden and released at a secret location in Norfolk. They settled here quickly and established a new population. Because of the specific habitat requirements, it's unlikely that the frogs will spread beyond the limits of their new home. So expanding the range of the species within England is probably always going to require further human assistance. The next step was to move some of the newly established population back to their last known native site at Thompson Common and for this, a new technique was adopted. In order to minimise the impact of removing frogs from the new population, some spawn has been taken and the tadpoles reared in captivity. Here they're protected from the high rates of predation normally seen in the wild in order to boost the numbers of fully grown tadpoles. These were first released at Thompson Common in 2015 and since 2017, the frogs have been breeding there successfully. Plans are now afoot to release the northern pool frog in other areas to consolidate their presence in England. The restoration of the northern pool frog by translocation has required a great deal of care in planning and in execution, but the effort has been worthwhile. Not only have northern pool frogs found new homes, 
but other aquatic wildlife has also benefited. Rare water beetles and plants, grass snakes and kingfishers and otters share the pool frog habitat. It's not every day that a species is brought back from extinction in Britain. And unusually within British wildlife conservation, our efforts are globally significant. So thanks to a lot of hard work and collaboration, we're successfully bringing the pool frog back to Britain.